Hello everybody! Got myself a new phone, so I, and this is the first time I've videoed, so I don't know what it's going to turn out like. God his Lordship, note the hair has been cut a little bit shorter, didn't want it cut too much. And uh, we are on our way to Howarth. Where? Howarth. Howarth. We're on our way to Howarth, which is... It's just a little village and uh, the youth hostel is along here somewhere, I think. Somewhere along there. And we drove down this road here. Down there. along this road here, carrying on along there, to here, and this was where we stayed. That was the reservoir that we went for a walk round. And this is how it appears with the Bronte Parsonage Museum here. Bronte country. If you remember Wuthering Heights, that's the area we're going to. We're going because um, my son and daughter are having a family get together with uh, my ex's other side of the family and uh, she's bringing her dog and she doesn't want the dog to be there. So we have booked a little cottage and we're going to stop nearby um, looking after the dog for her. And uh, we're staying for, in this little cottage for uh, four days, I think it is. Four it's days. now Friday and we're leaving on Tuesday. So we're gonna have a lovely time. I have been to, um, driven through this area but you, he knows it a lot better because it's around about here where he used to come. Well, not he didn't come from it, but you be you did that area quite a lot when you were repping. Oh yeah, so I repped it uh, for a very long time. So he knows the territory more. But I'm looking forward to going, and I'll take you with me. <laughs> See you later. Bye. The thing about being in the countryside, and I've closed my window because I just opened it is that you get the most wonderful aromas, don't you? Can't you can't smell get, it on film. You can't smell it on film, but it's April and it's time to fertilize the fields. And I think they fertilize the fields with human manure. <laughs> so you roll down your window of your car as you're driving through and you think, oh, look at this beautiful countryside. And then you think, <laughs> and apparently all these people from London who love to move out to the countryside when they move to the countryside and they get these kind of smells which the normal people who live in the countryside are used to and know that it happens every now and again they all complain because they say oh I don't want that disgusting smell in my village let's complain and people say but I'm sorry they've been doing this for years and just because you've come from London doesn't mean that we can't have this smell <laughs> no, we, I did. We, we did read up about a, a village in Devon where some people had moved there, and they were annoyed about the smells. And the, and the villagers said, "Well, I'm sorry, but if you move into the into the countryside, you've got to accept these smells." Yeah, so, there you go. Yeah, yeah.
very creaky floorboards. Shower and baths. And the bedroom. And the view of the countryside. Howarth Hills, are they? No, that's the Pennines. The Pennines. Where's the Howarth Hills? In? Well, that's part of the Pennines. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but how was that way? I know, it's behind us. It's actually not, it's across to the left. We've got to go down the road just to where those buildings are, those houses are. There's a road to the left in Howarth. Bronte, where the Bronte sisters lived, is to the left. of people buried here. Just look, this is the Howarth graveyard. I can't get over how many graves there are. Look at this lot here. 
we don't see those kind of graves. They're like um, like a crypt type grave. Not don't often see them, and there's tons and tons of them going right down there to the church. And a lot of them are young babies that who died at two, three, four. Really, uh, so sad. Don't know where the Bronte family were buried. Most of the Bronte family are interred in Haworth Parish Church. And Bronte is the only member of the family not to rest in the family vault beneath the floor at the east end of the church, tuberculosis, which afflicted Maria and Elizabeth in 1825, also caused the eventual deaths of three of the surviving Brontes, Branwell in September 1848, Emily in December 1848, and, finally, and in May 1849. Anne's health began to decline rapidly, like that of her brother and sister some months earlier. Charlotte accompanied her to Scarborough on the east coast in the hope that the sea air would improve her health. On the Sunday morning she felt weaker and asked if she could be taken back to Haworth. The doctor confirmed that she was near to death. She died at 2 p.m. on Monday the 28th of May. She is buried in the cemetery of St. Mary's of Scarborough. But uh, it's quite an eye-opener walking around here. Really an eye-opener. It's, it's how many how many graves there are and how many died at such a, such a young, young age. Sorry. And across from the church over there in the graveyard, you have... The Bronte House. So what did you say to me? Um, I'll get one when I'm there. You know, you said you don't need a hat. And it's really... Lemon bombs. Look at this. Please do not touch the salts. Sweet dreams. First aid in the tin. There you can get yourself a little one. Zambrook ointment. I don't know what's it for. It's embrocation for. Rub it in, wonderfully soothing, always keep it in handy. I can't read it with my glasses on. Oh, I'll get one of them. What will you get? Seaweed bath. I'll get it for the girls. Do you think? If you want to. I don't know. Sweet dreams and lavender bath, vanilla and oat, rose bath. Oh, look at him. Oh dear me. And uh, now I get a crocodile or an I used to have things like that in the classroom where I taught. These things they used to be on the top of the cupboards. Just like that, stuffed birds. A real box soothing bath salts and you get your little spoon to spoon it in or a bigger spoon and that's me poison sick balls <laughs> remember the flower fairies Flower fairy books, ladies, the older ones. Love them.
Oh, that wax melts. Mm. Well, we need that book, Brian. Yeah, that one at the top left. The Witcher's Well spell book. <laughs> Mm. Herbal tea magic for the modern witch. English fairy tales and their legends. Hans Christian Andersen. Complete grim book. Fairy tale. Complete novels of Jane Austen. Look at this beautiful book. Isn't that lovely? Dark is rising. Jane Austen. Snow Queen. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Oh, look at this natural history. Magic Beasts. Wikipedia. A modern day white witch's guide. Flower smells. And brews, white spells, quackery, spells for change, <coughs> dreams of witches, <gasps> far from the madding crowd, my favourite, favourite book, it makes me cry every time when I get to the end. Beautiful book. If you've never read it, I suggest you try. It's really good. These are all the Jane Eyre's, Little Women, Hard Times, Charles Dickens books. It'd be lovely to have those on a, on a book show. Great Expectations. Emma. Pride and Prejudice. These ones. The Little Mermaid. It's a bit of a oh look at this. Look at this. Three dimensional. Have you seen this, Brian? And then we come to the jewellery. Oh, I need that ring. What one? The one that says hag. <laughs> In English, the old lady's always an old hag. Earrings. It's raining and he needs a hat. Look at this lovely street. I'm going to turn it around for you to see. Isn't that lovely? And now we're going to go and have a look at the vintage so vintage clothing. Danger or person who goes great vengeance on people who've done them wrong. She said, Why are you? He says, I'm your Brilliant. Brilliant. The guy, the director, his, his, his script's fantastic. Oh, so nice. 
Oh, get myself an orange beret. An orange beret. This is piled up to the ceiling. It's piled up the ceiling with things. Oh, look at this. Look at the crosswork on that. Look at all these hats. Hats. <laughs> Hawthorne at Haworth. This building was the Georgian home of the Barraclough family of clockmakers, and Emily Bronte even used the name Mosley Barraclough in Wuthering Heights. An array of local historical artefacts, documents, and fine examples of Barraclough grandfather clocks and watches can be seen inside. This is actually a restaurant now, but you can see these clocks and, and uh, watches inside. Hello everybody, um, we, we're back from our trip to Haworth and uh, I, I'm in the middle, I've just been shopping, just been buying a few things and um, on my way back home, but we were, we went to Haworth and it was a wonderful time, had a lovely time, in the middle of it we experienced, his lordship thinks that it, thinks it's coincidental, no not so much, thinks his, his lordship thinks that his mother must have had something to do with it because his mother's name is Kathleen or Kath and when we were there we arrived on the Friday and on the Saturday we had Storm Kathleen <laughs> so part of the video of, me, of us walking and top walking the dog you can hardly hear me because Storm Kathleen was building up and then um, after that uh, it, it got to lunchtime. Our kids came to visit us to see what the cottage was like, and we were going to make them a cup of coffee. Couldn't make them a coffee because the electricity went off. And we now experience it when 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 you hear about the storms, they often say the people up in the hills have had the electricity's off, and it could be off for 24, 48 hours. Well, it went off, and so we couldn't give them a coffee. And then. Um, they said, if you want to come around tonight uh, to the to the youth hostel, come and have, their, they've got lots of food and they're going to enjoy them. We're going to have a little party or something. So we said, well, we're, we're, we're booked to go out for our evening meal. So, uh, but after that, we'll come along and see you. So I looked online to see what, if it said anything about when the electricity would come on. And it said it would come on at three, three o'clock. Didn't come on at three o'clock. Then it says six o'clock. And by six o'clock, we were just about to head off to the uh, to the pub. Six o'clock, it didn't come on. And so we went off to the pub and I kept checking. I said, oh, it says midnight. So we then went to the youth hostel to join them all. Had a lovely, lovely evening with them all. And by the time we got back, we could see all the lights in the little houses dotted all over. So we said, oh, the electricity's back on. Walked into our house and there was no electricity. So he had to find the... the, um, the um, what do you call it, the junction box, and he, he switched the switch and everything went on, so we were a lot happier. But it was uh, it was quite, an, you know, we, you kind of got to know that it, and we didn't have any heating, we did, well, we didn't have any heating, and there was nothing for the fire because the wood fire that was there, they didn't leave us any wood because we're only there for four days, and I think they probably leave it for people who are staying for longer for the full week. And, uh, and we, didn't, we couldn't cook. So thankfully, as I say, we we decided to go out. But uh, I can imagine that if you if if that's your permanent home, you would have to have 
some kind of secondary heating and some kind of secondary cooking facilities to get you through uh, what could sometimes, I know in, in our experience, it could sometimes be 24, 48 hours. But fortunately for us, it was only 12, from 12 till 12. So everything was fine. Anyway, I'm off back home and I'll catch you later. Also, um, we wanted to go and see uh, the Bronte house. I, there's a little video showing you the outside of the Bronte house. When we got to the entrance of the Bronte house, the lady at the entrance said, you've got to go down to, to get the tickets. So he thought you meant you had to go down to the car park. And when we got there, we couldn't find anywhere. So he said, I'll tell you what, he says, Sunday we'll go tomorrow when everybody's gone. They've all, all these weekenders will have gone and we'll go tomorrow. So uh, I said, fine. So I just took a picture of the outside of the of the Bronte house. And then um, the next day we decided, we got up and decided to go and see the Bronte house. Got there, it's closed on a Monday, so we never got to see anything. <laughs> So unfortunately, you don't get to see the inside of the Bronte house, but um, maybe it's another time we may go, go there and uh, we'll have another look. But uh, it was, other than that, it was an absolutely wonderful place. There is a, a video of, um, oh, it was a, a shop that was, oh, it was Cornucopia of Beautiful Things. And I filmed it and on the outside, I can't remember what it was called. It reminded me of Harry Potter type thing. And uh, it was lovely inside. And uh, so I've, I've got a bit of that showing you the things that they were selling and they really looked great. There were some lovely, lovely things in there. Some, the books, they had, they had the uh, traditional English, the, uh, they had the traditional classics books and they were all beautifully adorned and beautifully um, uh, backed, you know, uh, perhaps not leather bound, but they're gold foiled and everything. It was really, really lovely. Mm -hmm. 